The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what goes on in Summerfield. For a little goes on in Summerfield that sooner or later does not involve The Great Gildersleeve. For example, one day last week, Gildersleeve's neighbor, Mrs. Ransom, stepped into Peavy's Pharmacy made a slight purchase, and while waiting for it to be wrapped, dropped a casual remark. And how is Mrs. Peavy? Oh, she's fine, Mrs. Ransom, just fine. That is, she's, uh, well, she's been having a little trouble lately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Nothing serious, I hope. Well, to hear her tell it, Well, it's, uh, how long has this been going on? In about 30 years. Oh. <laughs> Now, that just goes to show. Here, I've known Mrs. Peavy all this time and never even had an inkling. I declare, some women are just martyrs. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, who, who's your doctor, Mr. Peavy? Have you a good doctor? Well, we usually take from Dr. Pettibone, but I haven't called him in on this after all. Oh, it's I just... know. Doctors are so expensive. And operations, oh, don't even mention them. But it doesn't pay to put them off. Well, I don't think this is as serious as all that. Uh, uh, well, I dare say she'll recover. Oh, well, she will, Mr. Peavy. I'm sure she will. You've just got to believe that. You've got to keep her believing it, too. Doctors say the will to live is half the battle. There's nothing the matter with her will to live. <laughs> oh, well, I think it's so brave of both of you to take it this way, and I'm just so sorry to hear about it. Now, if there's anything I can do for, anything at all, you let me know now, you hear? Oh, hi, Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Leroy. Is your uncle at home? Yeah, did you have an apartment? <laughs> Only kidding, Mrs. Ransom. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Hunt's in the living room. Marge is sewing a button on him. Well, hello, Leela. Okay, stand still. Hello, Mrs. Brand. Hello, Marjorie. You'll have to excuse me for not having my coat on, Leela. Marjorie's sewing a button on my vest. Uh -huh. Quite the little housewife, isn't she? Stand still. You want me to stick you? Better not, you'll let the air out. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, sometimes you're a little too smart for your britches. Go up and get ready for dinner. I am. Have you washed your hands? Yes. Well, go wash them. Okay. And stick in your shirt tail. Is that any way to greet Mrs. Ransom? How did I know Mrs. Ransom was coming? You can safely keep your shirt tail in at all times, my boy. You know the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leela, these little domestic affairs. There you are, Unky. Well, that's fine, my dear. Much obliged. Now, Leela? Well, I probably shouldn't even be speaking to you, Throckmorton, after the last time I saw you. But in time of trouble, I think we should forget our differences. Trouble? What do you mean, Leela? Have you heard about poor dear Mr. Peavy? What about Mr. Peavy? Mrs. Ransom, they're talking to me, my dear. Well, Marjorie may want to hear about this, too. It's Mrs. Peavy. I'm afraid she's very ill. Oh, that's a shame. Now, wait a minute. I was in Peavy's this morning. He didn't say anything to me about it. Well, you know how Mr. Peavy is. He never tells you anything anyway. That's right. Well, I had to practically pry it out of him. But I'm afraid the fact is that Mrs. Peavy needs an operation, and they can't afford it. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I guess that drugstore of his is no gold mine. Not the way he runs it. Beckman's is a lot better. Are you still here? Okay, okay, I'm going. What's better about Beckman's? Beckman's got all the best comics. Batman comics, murder comics, Captain Wonder Man. He's got them all. All Peavy's got is Donald Duck. That's the only one he likes to read. <laughs> well, Beckman's going to run him out of business if he doesn't wake up. But Peavy's such a stubborn old cooch, you can't tell him anything. I know, but he's such a darling, too. I can't bear to think of him in trouble. Neither can I. 
Isn't there something we could do, Uncle Morris? That's why I came to you, Throck Martin. I knew you'd always been a friend of his. Peavy's all right if he weren't so stubborn. Oh, and Mrs. Peavy, the poor old soul. I can't bear to think of her needing medical attention and not being able to afford it. Well, I'll tell you. Come and get it! <laughs> Just a minute, Bertie. We have company. Good evening, Bertie. How are you? Just fine, Miss Ransom. Thank you. Just fine. Miss Gilbert, what about Miss Ransom? Is she a... Uh, is she what, Bertie? Well, I just wanted to know. I mean, what about it? Is she a... Ain't she? Pardon me a moment, Leela. What is it you want to know, Bertie? <laughs> I just want to know, should I set another place? Oh! <laughs> it... <clears throat> How about it, Leela? Stay to supper? Oh, I couldn't. Oh, come on, Miss Vance. It won't be no trouble. Yes, please do. Oh, well, I don't know that I should. What are you having for supper, Bertie? Well, if I'd known you'd come in, Miss Vance, I might have done better. About all we got to offer is some stew made out of leftovers, but there's plenty of it. I don't think I'd better tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, perhaps. Thank you, just the same. I'll be running along... Oh, Frock Martin, about Mr. Peavy. Yeah, I'll see what I can do, Lee. Oh, I knew you would. Yeah, the Jolly Boys are meeting this evening. I'll be seeing him at the club. Well, now, don't tell him I said anything. You know how sensitive he is. Yeah, I won't, Leela. Don't worry. Good night, y'all. Hey, good night, y'all. All right, everybody, dinner. Marjorie, where are you going? To put these things away. All right, but hurry. <laughs> Leroy, where do you think you're going? Up to wash my hands. Confound it, I told you to do that half an hour ago. All right, go ahead. I don't know why it is. As soon as dinner's announced, it's a signal for this family to scatter. Bertie, where are you going? After the food. Oh, well, bring it on. I've got a meeting. <laughs> Sits him down, sits him down, and drinks his wine with laughter free, and never, never thinks of me. Fare thee well, for I must leave thee. Just, uh, hey, what's the matter, fellas? Come on. No, no, Commissioner, it's no good. Ah, uh, don't seem the same without Peavy. You're right, Floyd. Where is the Peave? I thought you said he was going to be here tonight, Commission. Well, I thought he was coming, Floyd, but I suppose it's possible he won't turn up. After all, I hear his wife is sick. Oh, that's too bad. Well, just because a fellow's wife's got the pips, no reason he can't get out and have a little fun, is it? Floyd. Well, I mean, he don't have to become a hermit, does he? After all... Mrs. Peavy is seriously ill, Floyd. Oh, yeah? As bad as that. And Peavy is a devoted husband. One of the few really devoted husbands I know. Yeah, I guess they are pretty thick at that. As husband and wives go. Gee... Maybe we should send her some flowers or something. That's more like it, Floyd. Roses are nice. Personally, I would prefer chrysanthemums. We're not sending these to you, Hooker. Ah, <laughs> uh, chrysanthemums stink. They smell up the house. Yeah. They don't smell at all. What about roses? Yeah, but roses smell nice. Well, all I can say... If I may have a word, please, Judge. Help yourself. Now, I'm familiar with the situation. I should like to submit that what Mrs. Peavy needs is not a bunch of roses or chrysanthemums, but an operation. Oh, that's bad. Did I ever tell you about the time that Boy, I... Boy, quiet. Okay. Now, operations cost money, fellas. Plenty of money. And just between you and me, I don't think Peavy can swing it. Of course, he wouldn't admit it, but you know how much trade he gets in that grocery, in that drugstore. A toothbrush here, a necko wafer there. Well, uh, what do you think we ought to do, Gildy? Well, either we're jolly boys or we're not. When you say that, smile. <laughs> if the purpose of this club isn't to help a fellow member when he's down, then what is it? To play a little poker. <laughs> Floyd, the wife of a fellow member, is lying ill at home. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Oh, I could bite my tongue off. Well, count me in. What do you want to do, pass the hat? I feel that that would definitely be a mistake. Peavy would never accept charity. Yeah, the judge is right. You know how touchy he is. Yeah, he's funny that way. Well, then maybe we better send him the roses. Yeah, wait a minute. I've got another idea. Maybe if we were to go to Dr. Pettibone, you know, on the QT, and persuade him to go a little easy on Peavy. Hey, now you're talking. He wouldn't have to cut his rate or anything. He could just make a little mistake in his bill and undercharge him. Why shouldn't he do it for nothing? 
Well, now... After all, Floyd... You should do it for nothing. That's asking a good deal. All right. If Peavy was to walk into my shop flat broke in need of a haircut, don't you think I'd give him one? You're darn right I would. I might wait on my regular customers first, but I'd give him one. <laughs> well... And I... throw in a shave, too. Well... And not charge him a cent. Well... Or expect a tip, either. These doctors. Well, that's big of you, as I started to say, Floyd. But you see, it's a little different with Dr. Pettibone. He's not a jolly boy, so it's not as if he was treating a fellow member. Or the wife of a fellow member, rather. By golly, Gildy, why don't we make him a member? The doc? That's an idea. Yeah, why not? The doc's a good fellow when he's not looking down your windpipe. Hey, if we elected him a member, we could make him operate on Peavy's wife for initiation, like. Operator, he don't get in. <laughs> well, I don't know that that's the way to put it, Floyd, but it's not a bad idea, not bad at all. Shall we put it to a vote, fellows? Do I hear the name of Dr. Pettibone proposed for membership? I so propose. Is it seconded? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The doc's a member. Who'll notify him? I propose that Mr. Gildersleeve and myself be appointed a committee of two to call upon the doctor and inform him of his good fortune. And don't forget what we elected him for. Move we adjourn. Seconded. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. What do you say? One more song before we go, eh? A song without Peavy? In honor of Peavy. Yeah, yeah. Peavy'd want it that way. Oh. Uh, sit down there, Floyd. You know, our big special. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I miss you, dear old pal of mine. Each day I miss you. to hear this. Gildersleeve and his dear old pals will be back in just a moment. What are you going to tell us tonight about parquet margarine, Mr. Lang? Why, I was just thinking about that the other day while my family and I were driving through the country. As we passed by several fine-looking farms, it made me wonder how many people know that parquet margarine is made from choice products of our American farmlands. I'm sure we'd all like to hear about that. Because so many families use parquet margarine as a regular spread. Parquet, you see, is made from rich, highly refined vegetable oils and pasteurized skim milk, cultured for flavor. That sounds wholesome and nourishing. Indeed it does, for parquet is one of the finest energy foods you can serve. And remember, Kraft adds important vitamin A to every single pound, making parquet margarine an even more valuable food. Hmm, well, that's something we too often take for granted. And good nutrition is so important these days. Yes, and flavor is important, too. Helps us enjoy the things that are so good for us. That's why Kraft takes special care in flavor blending the fine, wholesome farm products used in Parquet. So join the millions who prefer delicious, nourishing Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great-hearted Gildersleeve. Driven by his concern for his old friend Peavy, we find him with Judge Hooker, a committee of two representing the Jolly Boys, walking into the office of Dr. Pettibone. Huh. Where is he? He must be inside. He's always here at 9 o'clock. Well, pick out a magazine and make yourself comfortable, Judge. Have you seen Hygieia for August 1942? <laughs> I've read it from cover to cover. Didn't help you any. <laughs> Gildy, may I suggest that since I know Pettibone better than you That you allow me to do most of the talking? You can do half of it well, Let me start, let me explain the situation Pettibone's kind of touchy on some things, you know Now, what is there to be touchy about? Plenty, in the first place Oh, good morning, Judge Good morning, Miss Finlay 
<laughs> this is my friend, Mr. Gildersleeve, Miss Finley. Oh, how do you do? Uh, just fine, thank you. There's nothing the matter with me, Miss Finley. We're here to see the doctor on a personal matter. Oh, we'll go right in. Thank you. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> oh, hi, Doc. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> Pretty nice-looking receptionist you've got there. I'm surprised your wife lets you get away with it. She's my wife's cousin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, which one, of, which one of you fellows is sick? Neither of us, Doctor. That is, I'm feeling as well as usual. But we didn't come for a professional reason. We didn't? Please, Gildy, if you let me. Oh. No, Doctor, we came to bring you some good news. You know a few of us fellows have a little club. Oh, that. Club? Well, you know, what club? The Jolly Boys Club. It's just a few fellows, I guess you'd call us kindred spirits. And we generally get together on Saturday nights and raise Ned for a few hours. We sing, play cards, tell a few stories. Get on with it, Horace. Well, Doctor, Mr. Gildersleeve and I are a delegation, a committee of two officially chosen by the Jolly Boys Club to call on you. Well, what for? It is my pleasure and high privilege to announce your unanimous election to the Jolly Boys Club as a full participating member with all rights and perquisites pertaining thereto. The dues are 50 cents a month. Ah, I see. <laughs> do, do I know any of the other members? Chief of police? Oh, yes, yes, Chief Gates. He has a slight systolic murmur. You'd never know it to hear him sing. And you know Floyd Munson, the barber. We meet upstairs over his shop. Floyd? I set his leg when he broke it on election night back in 1936. Of course, you know Peavy the drugger. Peavy? Asthma. It's... Good fellow. Good fellow just the same. I think you find the Jolly Boys a pretty congenial group, Doctor. Well, I do enjoy a little card game occasionally. Dr. Pettibone, Mr. Eberbaugh is here. Oh, thank you. Now, if you fellas will excuse There's me... There's something else we have to ask you, Doctor. Let Mr. Um, Eberbaugh wait a minute, will you? Well, he's got an appointment. Oh? Well, then we'd better come back later. No, no, Judge. It'll only take a second. Tell Eberbaugh to wait, Miss Finley. All right, Miss Finley. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> It's this way, Doc. Now that you're a jolly boy, we can speak freely. Yes, you're one of us now, Doctor. And the motto of the jolly boys is, one for all, all for one. Yeah, what are you getting at? Well, it's about Peavy. Now, we all agree Peavy is a fine fellow. Yeah, yeah. And his wife, Mrs. Peavy, is a fine woman. Well, that may be. Take my word for it, she's a splendid woman. All right, all right. She's Florence Nightingale. What about it? As a jolly boy, Doctor, you wouldn't want anything to happen to Mrs. Peavy, would you? No, why? Is Peavy thinking of, uh, what, doing her in? Yes. I'm sure you're joking, Dr. Fettibone. They're a most devoted uh, couple. Why, Peavy thinks the world of her. He often has... Ye seen... gods, Judge, don't beat around the bush all night. I was Shut just... Shut up, it's my turn to talk. <laughs> Pettibone, Mrs. Peavy needs some kind of an operation, and Peavy can't afford it. Will you do it? Gilly, that's not the way... Will you, Pettibone? Why the dickens should I? Pettibone, as a humanitarian and a jolly boy... Peavy hasn't seen fit to call me in on the case... I'm not going to take it away from another doctor. Are you going to let somebody else hold him up for a big fee? If the doctor on the case calls me in, I'll be very happy to consult with him. So Peavy can pay two bills instead of one, eh? Ha! Gildy, I don't think you understand Dr. Pettibone's position. Oh, yes, I do. You doctors are all the same, the way you back each other up. Well, let me tell you, Pettibone. Careful, Gildersleeve. Remember your hypertension. You can't... You can't scare me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm certainly much obliged to your visit, gentlemen. Elect me to a club that meets over a barbershop and then ask for a thousand dollars worth of surgery. Now, Pettibone, I don't think that's fair. If you'll excuse me, I have a two-dollar cash patient in the waiting room. Huh. Come on, Judge. No, 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 this door, please. What? This way, Judge. Good day. Oh. Shoving us out the back door. We don't even get another look at that nurse. Well, fellas, how'd you make out? Floyd, we've got to call an emergency meeting of the Jolly Boys. Yeah, right away. Can we meet tonight, Floyd? Oh, what's the matter with right now? I got the chief under the towel here. Oh? Well, open them up. We got to have a quorum. I can hear all right, boys. Go ahead with the meeting. All right, let's come to order. Now, uh, Pettibone didn't he react very favorably to our proposal. He didn't? You hear that, chief? Yep. He's a heel. Yeah, well, that may be, Chief, but Peavy's as bad off as ever. Well, he runs that store like a museum. No wonder he don't make money. Modern merchandising methods would help, no doubt about it. Some of the tricks Beckman uses. Peavy's too stubborn to take advice, though. Do you think he'd accept a loan? He might. You got any money to loan him? 
No. Have you, Gildy? No. How about you, Floyd? Nope. We'll have to think of something else. <laughs> I know, fellas. Peavy needs money. Well, nobody's got enough to loan him, but we could spend some money. Suppose we tell all our friends to go into Peavy's and buy six months' drug supply in advance, or whatever they can afford. That's a possibility. Yeah, that sounds good, yeah. Hear that, Chief? Yeah, that's okay. Of course, we'll have to spend all we can, too. Now, why don't we get a six-month supply of hair tonic, Floyd? At retail? Listen, I'm a jolly boy, but I ain't that jolly. <laughs> well, a judge can buy his liver medicine for six months ahead. How do I know I'll live six months to enjoy it? Oh, what's the diff? You can't take it with you. What's Gildersleeve going to buy? Don't worry about me, Horace. I'll do some of my Christmas shopping. Eh, uh, how about the chief? What do you say, chief? Will you buy six months' drug supplies at Peavy's? Sure. What does that amount to, chief? Three cakes of soap. <laughs> You'll have to do more than that, chief. Okay, I'll send in some of the boys. That's the main thing. Send in lots of people. Everybody we know. High and low, rich and poor, young and old. Send them to Peavy's. Just a minute, Mrs. Ransom. I'll wait, Mr. Peavy. Good afternoon, Mrs. Bullock. Oh, Mrs. Ransom. Doing a little shopping? Yes. Isn't it fun and in such a good cause, too? Yes. 85, 170, 37, that's the skin lotion, and a dollar fifty for the candy. That'll be 747, Mrs. Bullard, and let's see, uh, 23 cents for the governor. Will that be all? Yes, thank you. 770 out of 10. 775, 8, 9, 10 dollars. I'll tuck the things in my market basket. There. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, Mrs. Ransom, what can I do for you? Well, I want just lots and lots of things. Mm, don't you? Oh, yes. I'd like three lipsticks and a half a dozen toothbrushes. Yeah, just and a minute here, my goodness. <laughs> One thing at a time. And I also want a... Uh -huh. uh, Hiya, Peavy. Hello, Mrs. Ransom. How's it going? I'm very well, thank you, Mr. Munson. Uh, wrap me up a dozen of those shaving bowls when you get a chance, Peavy. A dozen? Mm -hmm. And I want a dozen boxes of face tissues, please, Mr. Peavy. Well, I just happen to have them. I... Good afternoon. I'd like six bottles of cod liver oil, please. Madam, you'll have to wait your turn. Yes, Leroy, but you'll have to wait till I get to you. Okay, you got plenty of it? Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, he's got barrels of it. Come on in. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness gracious. One at a time, please. One at a time. Heavens to Betsy, the world's not coming to an end, you know. crowd. I thought people would be running in and out of this store like rabbits. Well, hmm. four o'clock in the afternoon, he can't be. Ah, uh, there he is. Hey, Peavy. I see you, Peavy. Let me in. Go away. Let me in. We're closed. <laughs> let me in anyway. Come on, let me in or I'll bust the door. No, please. Now hurry up before somebody sees you. Peavy, what happened to your bell? The fuse blew out about a half hour ago. <laughs> or maybe it just wore out. <laughs> Been pretty busy today, have you, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, I had to close up in self-defense. <laughs> Did you ever visit the stock exchange in Chicago? I saw the one in New York. Uh, I guess it's all the same. Fellas standing around yelling at each other. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what's been going on in my store since about 12 noon today. The whole police force came in about 2 o'clock and bought toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, I just can't understand it. Well, the cops want to brush their teeth, that's all. 
And then Leroy came in and bought $5 worth of chewing gum. Chewing gum? I told that kid to get something the whole family could use and enjoy. Oh, you sent Leroy? Yes, Peavy. Um, <clears throat> wasn't going to tell you this, but this whole thing was cooked up by the Jolly Boys. Mm, I'm afraid I don't understand you. Well, Peavy, we heard about Mrs. Peavy's trouble. Jolly Boys decided if you needed money, the main thing to do was to chase people in here to buy merchandise. Stock up on stuff they'd need later on. So you could have the cash now. You needn't thank us. Well, thank you, but uh, who told you Mrs. Peavy had any trouble, if I may ask? Well, Mrs. Ransom told me she needed an operation. Why? Uh, well, nothing in particular. She does need an operation, doesn't she? She's never mentioned it. <laughs> well, you can't fool me, old pal. Your wife's a sick woman and she needs a doctor's attention. Well, I don't know. She stacked a half a quart of stove wood yesterday. <laughs> oh, Peavy, you're an imposter. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. You are. You deliberately gave Mrs. Ransom the idea you needed money for a doctor. But I never said... You can that... expect Leroy down here tomorrow morning with that chewing gum and see that he gets his money back. The very... Uh... <laughs> that man certainly has a temper. Yeah, I'll get back to my counting here. 200, 210, 12, 15. $215. <laughs> Not bad for the old lady's rheumatism. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a few moments. Don't you sometimes get a hankering for different kinds of bread, such as Johnny Cake, gingerbread, or muffins? I'm sure all these tasty hot breads will make a hit at your table, served with a delicious spread to make them taste extra good. And the spread I have in mind, of course, is parquet margarine, preferred by millions because of its fresh, sweet, delicate flavor. Melting into hot breads like Johnny Cake and gingerbread, Parquet really is delicious. Your first taste will tell you why it's still unmatched for fresh, delicate flavor. Another reason you'll like parquet margarine is the smooth, easy way it spreads. And remember, too, parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. So be sure to insist on economical, flavor-fresh parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. No, Leroy. What for? Well, Piggy and I need it, just for a few minutes. My hatchet is not a toy, young man. What do you want it for? Uh, just a little Halloween trick we thought of. There'll be no tricks, no, sir. What is the trick? I don't want Marge to hear. What is it? Well, I could whisper. Hey, no fair. That is outrageous, Leroy. Absolutely not. How can you even think of such a thing? Who on earth could you think of doing such a thing to? Well, we were thinking of... Judge Hooker. The hatchet's in the garage. <laughs> but remember, I told you not to. <laughs> Go to bed, Leroy. I want to sit up and listen to Jack Benny. <laughs> Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry and is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Youngsters get hungry at all hours. And when they do, treat them to Pabstep, the delicious golden cheese food. You can just bet they'll like Pabstep. It's so rich in cheddar cheese flavor, so easy to digest. Children simply love Pabstep spread on crackers or bread. And remember, Pabstad is equally delicious, melted into a luscious cheese sauce, toasted for sandwiches, or served in wedges with fruit or pie for dessert. Don't forget to buy Pabstad. Add delicious, nourishing Pabstad cheese food to your shopping list tomorrow. This is the National Broadcast.